We're going to be mixing uh, paint for extended blending and I do it a bottle at a time because I share it with my studio students and then I use it too. So we begin with a bottle and we've got yellow oxide right here. And these containers that I get in Hobby Lobby will hold an entire bottle of paint. But there is a little bit of work involved getting all this paint out of the bottle. Okay. Now, this bottle wasn't quite full, so we're going to continue with the new bottle and get the level of the paint as close to the ridge that you can see on this container because that's where I can judge just exactly where I need to fill with my blending medium. We have the paint into the container and the blending medium will be put in one quarter volume to whatever amount of paint you have. Now the paint is below the little ridge on this container so she's filling the blending medium up with the ridge. If we get too much in there, this paint's going to be too wet and take forever to dry down. Then with the palette knife, you begin the stirring process. You have to stir until all the fluid is totally mixed. Now what happens is the paint has been formulated with a certain percentage of water and the water is lighter weight in density than the blending medium. So it will rise to the top and evaporate. Each day we stir and redistribute the blending medium which has sunk to the bottom and that will allow more water to rise up to the top. Some colors are ready in just a day or two. Others, it takes much longer. Depends on the pigment. Yellow oxide seems to take a while. So this one, depending on the humidity in the room and the temperature, uh, has taken me up to a week. But you've got to remember we're doing an entire bottle of paint. Paints have been sitting for a period of time. Now here's yellow oxide, not quite ready to go yet because when you lift your knife out it should hold a peak and it's definitely way too runny. But she's stirring it for its daily stir and making sure there's not a dry buildup on the edges. If it is, we use these little knives and cut it loose and let the extra paint drip back off of the dry and then get rid of it because it tends to act as a collection area and more and more paint sticks to that. So this one will be set aside for today. And the next one you're going to see a total different thickness. Again, not quite thick enough. It comes to a peak but then the peak goes right back down and I'm going to zoom in on that so that you can see what I'm talking about. See the peak come up and then go down so that's still too thin. Now you do want to make sure you wipe your knife well between colors because you don't want to make a mess. Now this one we took out of my paint cabinet This is red violet and it is correct. When that comes up, that peak will hold. It stands up for you. So it's not whipping cream, but it's close to toothpaste. And some of these I work even thicker. Just depends on what I'm going to do with the color. Okay, I'm in I'm in close now. You can see the peak come up and stay there. It doesn't disappear right away on you. That means you can put it away. If we get them too dry, they do continue 
to thicken over time and you'll end up with it too thick. These are monitored every three weeks to a month. Many of them don't need anything, especially if they're in a screw top container. But these with the snap-ons, we have to watch. And so we're going to show you then some different containers other than this one that's available. You can get these from, I get them at Hobby Lobby. There's four of them for $4.99. And they hold two ounces. And I've got a lot of my mixes in those. You can also get a much smaller container. It's made by Speedball. Six of these for $3.99. And they're much smaller, but for small amounts of paint, if you're not going to be sharing your paint like I do, those work perfectly. Then there's containers called block ups that you can get online. And they come in all different sizes. And they have nice, tight screw on lids and I have all my gray mixes in the extended form in these and so when I need to paint in gray I just simply have to open them up and put out a small amount of paint on my wax palette and I'm good to go.